Okay, uh, good morning and uh, welcome everyone. I trust that you had a, a good weekend. Yes? So how many of us had a blessed weekend? Okay, good, good to uh, see your hands and your smiling faces. I'm sure that uh, you will continue to be blessed through the week. Uh, we, for this class, we are going to study uh, on the subject of prayer and intercession. Okay, So uh, it, it is a very foundational subject, something that each one of us desire to grow in. And um, I truly believe that it will be a very strengthening topic for us to dwell on. So let's pray and uh, we will get into today's study. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this life in Christ and uh, God, uh, that Lord, you are helping us come deeper and uh, get higher in the things of God. Lord, as we learn more about the subject of prayer, uh, Father, we ask, oh God, that you will kindle a desire in each of us to strengthen ourselves in this area, Father. And uh, Lord, uh, we pray that uh, we will be able to, uh, Lord, make very firm, Lord, our relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So prayer and intercession, uh, even before we get into it, uh, all of us would agree that uh, prayer is one of the most important things uh, in our Christian walk. If there is no prayer, you know, there's like a disconnect between God and us. And for us to develop an intimate relationship with God, you know, we can have um, a relationship with God of any level. Okay, and we can say that, yeah, I, I still have a relationship with God. But God wants us to have an intimate relationship with Him. Now, we can take, for example, um, you know, people whom we probably just know by their face and appearance. Like, you know, sometimes we find someone who is uh, probably working in our apartment complex or, you know, in our area, and you just see them on and off. And maybe somebody uh, who's at the gate, you know, we sometimes have our security uh, brothers and we say, okay, good morning. Uh, they also say, good morning. You smile at them and that's it. You don't speak anything more with them. Or, uh, you know, you go to a shop and purchase something. You've seen that same person there helping you out each time, uh, you know, billing whatever you buy. And you say, hi, how are you? How was your day? That's about it. No more communication. Stop. Right. But what is a close relationship or a close friendship? When we take our family members, for example, right? We probably know them quite well. We know uh, what they like to eat, what they don't like to eat, you know, what they like to do during their free time. And there's more interaction with them, right? So we know them in a deeper way. Now, how does God want our prayer life to be? He wants us to have an intimate relationship with him. And therefore, the prayer life has got to become stronger and stronger as we journey with God. It's not about, okay, I need to communicate with God, learn how to communicate, communicate to an extent, and yes, that's good enough. Right? That's not our focus. Our focus is, how can I get deeper? How can I get stronger in my prayer life? Because God is calling us to an intimate relationship with him, meaning a close relationship with him. Okay? So as we learn about prayer, that is what I want to request each of us. Now, don't take this as it's a class. I have to uh, clear it. I have to complete the requirements, pass the exams. That is one aspect. But more importantly, we want to strengthen our relationship with the Lord and make it a strong and an intimate relationship with him. Okay, so that is the primary goal. And if we are moving towards that, uh, then we have achieved the intention of our course. Okay, And uh, one more thing, whenever we do courses here uh, at the Bible College, uh, don't take it as this is first year. Let's say next year, second year, we talk to us about prayer and intercession. And uh, if any of you say, that's over, First year we finished, ma'am, don't talk about prayer and intercession. It's over. 
that won't be correct because all of these subjects are relevant at all times okay so uh, we need an interest just because we complete the subject don't lose interest in that subject keep learning about it growing in it keep refreshing yourself uh, we have some of our um, outreach pastors who have studied at the bible college and they've gone and planted churches so sometimes when uh, i interact with them today uh, they say things like we still have our notes you know we still keep going back to those notes the things that god revealed to us when we were studying in bible college it's helping us even up until today there are new things we've learned but even those old uh, classes notes we are holding on to them we have our copies and you know it's uh, really helpful so it's a lifelong journey of learning and we need that kind of a perspective okay everyone good with that yeah great so now let's talk about prayer and intercession um uh, also welcome all our um, online students thank you for connecting so what is prayer we're going to talk about prayer but what is prayer okay communicating with god that's correct um what else relationship with god we all pray isn't it i'm sure we all pray so what is prayer talking to god okay yes communing with god communication with god yep yes sorry growing spiritually okay growing spiritually hmm. spending time with god okay yes any other answers yeah yeah in the notes i'm asking your uh, view of what prayer is yes of course in the notes we have more points there uh, we have people sharing shubham says communication with god amber personal conversation with god stephen having fellowship with the lord shakti says spend time with god okay wonderful uh, okay jiru grace getting to know more about him fine so prayer is all of this okay prayer is all of this um so when we talk about communicating with god how does it work how does it work fine we express our heart to god and then huh okay 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 sure so confessing or uh, acknowledging what god has done then confessing our sins and then coming to him in prayer you know we have many needs so then you place the needs before god uh, but is that all what prayer is communication with god giving thanks to god okay very good uh, one more uh, aspect there which is to listen to god listen to god okay has this ever happened to you somebody came to you and they started speaking okay started saying so many things like this that what do you think and all before you can say what you think okay bye see you tomorrow how will you feel you feel frustrated because you heard them out and you wanted to say something but they're gone okay um when we pray like this to god we go we say god 5:30 to 6 o'clock in the morning that's my time with you we come there with some three pages of notes okay acknowledge him declare his goodness repent of my sins these are all my needs thank you jesus amen okay and you're out and god is like hey wait a minute i want to talk to you also you spoke to me but i want to speak to you speak to you so effective communication is like that we speak to god but we also listen listen what is it that god wants to speak to us so we'll see later on there are many different types of prayers that we can engage in there are times in prayer where we can just sit and listen also 
and uh, uh, hear what is on God's heart for me. What is God speaking to me today? Right. So speak to God, but also listen to Him. So it's two way. It's got to be two way. If it is effective, that is communication with God uh, and um, spending time with Him and uh, experiencing Him, uh, receiving from Him. All of that. Okay. So all of that takes place. So that's communing with God. Now, what else is prayer? Now, most of us have answered, um, uh, you know, related to communion with God or communicating with God. Now, prayer is many other things also, and we are going to understand them. Prayer is a ministry. Okay, prayer is a ministry. What is ministry? Service. Simple. Prayer is a ministry. So if we say that we are in ministry, it simply means we are serving. We are serving God. We are serving people. When we pray for people, we are serving people. Okay, so prayer is a ministry. We will come to a section in our study on the subject of intercession. Intercession is to pray for another person. Now that is also prayer. So through prayer, uh, we can be a blessing to others. We can um, stand in the gap for them and see to it that they receive victory, healing, breakthrough, deliverance, whatever it is that they need in their life. So prayer is also ministry. Prayer is communication. Prayer is ministry. Prayer is warfare as well. So when we pray, right? Uh, one of the things is that Jesus has already won the victory for us on the cross. All right. But we pray to enforce that victory. The victory is already there then why can't that victory be appropriated in the lives of people? See, there are many other things that we need to do. Things like believing the word, declaring the word, being obedient to the word, also praying. When we pray, it's spiritual warfare. We'll see examples of people in scripture, people like Daniel. You know, there is a time when God, he prays to God and God answers him. Okay, God answers him immediately, but he does not get the answer. What happened? There was a demonic interference, right? So there are these spiritual battles that go on, which cannot be won unless we pray. Now, thank God, Daniel knew the power of prayer and he was a man of prayer. He prayed, he prayed and prayed. And then what do we see happen? He wins that battle. God sends an angel and the angel overcomes the demonic principalities and the answer comes through to him. So there are times when our prayer is actually warfare. We're going against demonic powers uh, and we are winning the victory. Okay, So prayer is also warfare and uh, prayer is... Um, you know, we will see other aspects of it, but you know, these are some major things, communion with God, ministry, uh, warfare, and, um, you know, most importantly, it helps us experience God in a powerful way. Uh, so prayer is very powerful. God hears our prayer and God responds to our prayer. Now, think about this. You know, if something was um, being sold to us, okay, for example, if you take a phone, somebody is selling you the latest model of a phone and uh, they're saying, no, you need it. It's very important. And then you go and uh, purchase that phone. And if that phone doesn't work, how would you like it? They said all these nice things about the phone and you spent all your money went and bought it now it does not work at all you're trying to make some simple calls it doesn't work does any company do that they don't right when they promote and they say hey use this this works uh, this is beneficial it's better than the previous model it's because there's something special about that instrument or that gadget that you can work with it. And even like the normal uh, gadgets that are being sold, they work. 
okay and uh, they are useful to us and we don't see that you know people sell us something that doesn't do what it is claiming to do now when it comes to the word of god and when it comes to prayer we see lots of scriptures where god says pray 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 so we will understand that prayer is god's design so if there's anyone here when we pray and we think yeah it's okay i'm praying but it doesn't work you know god told me to pray i'm praying but actually it doesn't work that is a wrong understanding of prayer if we pray like that then what we are saying is what god has created god has designed for us to be effective in our lives we we are actually saying that it doesn't work okay uh but when god is telling us to do something if we are sure about you know our earthly um things that yes they do work how much more sure we should be about what god has designed and god is calling us to use that in our lives so prayer is one such design of god where god invites us as believers and says pray 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 we see the early church prayed um a men and women of god prayed okay why did they pray if prayer doesn't work why did they pray it's a question we have to ask ourselves prayer works it's god's design yes sometimes we don't see answers is it because prayer is not working prayer is not right no that's not that's not our conclusion prayer is effective prayer is designed by god god is calling us to prayer why are the answers not coming there can be many other reasons but prayer is effective prayer is powerful and god calls us to pray let's look at a scripture here psalm 65 and verse 2 um either those who are online could unmute and read it out or we could have uh, somebody in class use the mic and read out the scripture it's there in the notes as well psalm 65 and verse 2 o thou that hear us prayer unto thee shall all flesh come okay um that's really encouraging psalm 65 verse 2 says o you who hear prayer so first we said god design prayer it's effective it works second god hears prayer so for some of us we may have this mentality that okay i'm praying but how many prayers god will listen to you know today maybe 1 billion people have knocked his door and said god listen to my prayer listen to my prayer how will god listen to everybody's prayer maybe he's missing some of the emails you know happens to us uh, but the bible says no he's not like that he's an all powerful god he's an all knowing god he never gets tired he never sleeps nor slumbers so if all of us put together pray at the same time he can still hear our prayers he can still note our concerns okay he can still communicate with us how is it possible because he is god okay we are limited but god is not limited so here's the second thing that i want us to understand first was prayer is god's design second is god hears prayer it's very simple but it's very powerful do i believe that god hears prayer if i don't believe that god hears my prayer then i'm praying without faith and can uh, praying without faith get us results no faith no outcome okay but believe that our god is a prayer answering god he hears whenever we pray he hears i don't know about you but there are many things that have happened in my life where uh, i may have prayed a very simple prayer and said god wouldn't it be nice if this that something like that and you know amazing that god actually leads you into those things and you're thinking wow even my simplest cry god heard my simplest desire the lord honored it's amazing he makes a note of our prayers 
and uh, we need that confidence we need to believe that god hears our prayer and let's look at one more scripture here first peter chapter 3 and verse 12 could someone else uh, please go ahead and read it aloud okay so uh, here it says the eyes of the lord are on the righteous are on the righteous and the ears are open to their prayers so it's as if it's as if god is waiting to listen god is waiting to listen god is waiting to um watch and hear our prayers okay we must not have this mindset where we think that actually god is not interested okay if you ask a parent when their kids are growing up uh, they are very interested they are waiting to hear okay when will my child speak when will they say their first words they are very attentive and when the child starts speaking they they constantly focusing on the child and they you know enjoying it they are like wow you know my my daughter said this word my son said that sentence so their ears are turned towards their children and they want to listen and they want to respond to it it's somewhat like that when we say that god's ears are open to their prayers it's like uh, you can imagine god is waiting and trying to listen hard okay what are they saying what are they saying because i want to listen i want to listen now this is another understanding that we need sometimes what we believe is god is not interested god is too busy he is not interested in my problems my concerns my needs no but the bible says he is interested he is very interested in fact he is waiting to listen from us okay so when we pray we can pray believing these things what are those things one prayer is designed by god it works if we pray the way god is teaching us to pray it works it should work every time second god hears our prayers god hears our prayers third god is interested to hear our prayers okay so all of this must really motivate us to come to god sometimes satan puts lies in our minds and says no god is not listening god is not interested prayer doesn't work but when we believe that we're actually losing the battle because we're not engaging in prayer which can not only help us communicate with god but it also strengthens us strengthens our relationship with god okay now we will move ahead to the first chapter here but at any point if you have questions or you know some comments uh, that you want to share please feel free you can raise your hand there's a mic which will be passed around and you can go ahead and share similarly those online as well uh, you can always share your thoughts we'll move ahead now to the first chapter and try to understand how god created man and uh, why did he design prayer so those are the questions we are trying to answer so we know that in the beginning god created adam and eve he placed them in a garden he gave them authority over the earth okay so man was given dominion we see that in genesis chapter 1 verses 26 and 27 could somebody please read this passage very important passage genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and 27 okay when i sorry to interrupt you if you could please use the mic because the online students can also hear you then god said let us make man in our image according to our likeness 
Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Okay. So one word that we could make a note of over here is dominion. Dominion. So God created man, God created woman, and he gave them dominion over the earth. Dominion is the ability to rule and reign over creation. So we see the description here, how God said over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So what did God do? God deputized man. God gave responsibility to man and God also gave authority to man to fulfill that responsibility. So man was created in the image of God, which means in the likeness of God. And he was capable of leading. That's why God gave him dominion. You see, there are parallel scriptures. If we look at Psalm chapter 8, verses 5 and 6, we notice that man, um, you know, the heavens, okay, we'll just go back and read that. I think it will be better to read it and then I can explain it. Psalm 8, verses 5 and 6, please. Could someone read that aloud? Hmm. Okay, so we notice here that God made man and gave him authority, right? All authority. He, he entrusted him. Let me use the exact words there. You have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, it says. So man, when man was created, that was God's original purpose. That he should have all dominion and authority. But notice it also says a little lower than the angels. What does that mean? Is man lower than the angels? Yes, no, no, yes, okay, mixed uh, response, no and yes. So for us to understand a uh, standalone thought like this, looks like man is lower than the angels, based on this verse. Scripture interprets scripture well. So for us to conclude, is this correct or wrong, we have to look at other parts in scripture. Do we find that other parts? portions also say that man is made lower than angels? The answer is no, it doesn't. Okay, because the reason is, like if you go to a passage in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14, that reveals to us that angels are ministering spirits who are sent by God to help or to aid um, those who have inherited salvation. That means angels are serving spirits who come to help us. Okay, so then how do we conclude on uh, Psalm 8? We understand this in a very simple way. When it says man was made a little lower than the angels, it simply means that man carries, uh, you know, glory here. Man does not have heavenly glory because angels have heavenly glory, right? So they're still carrying heavenly glory. Here on earth, we don't have heavenly glory. We have something called as the sonship glory. Okay? That is why the scripture is saying lower than the angels, but it should not be interpreted you know, in a simple way like that because it's a standalone scripture here. Got it? So yes, we have been given dominion. We've been given authority. 
so the earth has been entrusted to man to take care of are we all did we all get that we're all okay with it yes yes boas okay uh, regarding uh, man is made lower Hmm. Hmm. You didn't get that. See, the question was, is man lower than the angels? Okay. We were trying to find an answer to it because this scripture says he is made lower. Okay. But when we look at other passages of scripture, we see that angels were sent to help man. Got it? They were sent to serve man. So in terms of the, if you want to call it gradation, hierarchy, uh, man is not lower than the angels. Then how do we understand this? When you say lower, it simply means that man does not carry heavenly glory, which angels carry. Okay. Um, okay, let me just turn to another passage to help you understand that. Okay, look at this. This is about Jesus in Philippians chapter 2. Okay, Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 where it says, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on of the cross. So this is very similar. Jesus, what happened? Jesus left behind his heavenly glory. He humbled himself. So when he was here on the earth, he became a man. Now that Jesus is man, can we say he's lower than the angels? We can't because... He is God. Okay? He is God. But when he is on the earth, one thing he has done is he left his heavenly glory. He does not carry his heavenly glory. Like that, he's humbled himself. Or he is, uh, you could say, kind of uh, put himself lower than what he actually is. Very similar. When you read uh, Psalms chapter 8 there, and you read that, Man is made lower than the angels. It doesn't mean gradation. It simply means angels carry heavenly glory. Man, yeah, man does not carry heavenly glory. Is that clear enough? Okay, great. Yes. So we've understood so far that man has been given dominion on the earth. Whatever happens here on the earth is man's responsibility. Yes. Okay, uh, so it obviously means man and woman. Yeah, how, how will we conclude like that? We'll go back to Genesis 1, Genesis 1, 26 and 27, where it clearly says man and woman he made in his own image. So we extend that interpretation to Psalm 8 here. Okay, fine. So man and woman both carry authority and dominion on the earth. Now, there is another scripture, Psalm 115 and verse 16, um, which tells us that the heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. Okay, So the heavens belong to whom? To God. The earth he has given to the sons of men. What is our understanding based on this? God takes care. See, God is God and he oversees both heaven and earth. But he has put man or you could say man and woman in charge of all the things that take place here on the earth. So if anything goes wrong, who's responsible? Anything goes wrong here in in the earth, who's responsible? 
yeah people right we are responsible because the heavens belong to god but the earth he has given to the sons of men or he has given it to us so that is our understanding of how god has originally created man and woman now think about this jesus okay jesus luke chapter 4 he is going through his temptation 40 days he is in the wilderness he is not eaten anything uh, and you know uh, he is consecrating himself to god and then the temptation happens satan comes to jesus and he starts to suggest all kinds of things you know he says things like why don't you uh, uh, leap off the the temple height the angels will come and protect you or why don't you command these stones to turn into bread um, and he also shows him the kingdoms of the world and he says these kingdoms are mine and i will give it to you okay and thank god how did jesus overcome temptation he used the word of god right the word of god is the sword offensive sword he used the word against satan and he defeated satan every time but my question to you is just now we have used scriptures to establish that god gave man dominion over the earth why is satan telling jesus these kingdoms belong to me i will give them to you what happened shouldn't the kingdoms already belong to man why is satan saying these kingdoms are mine i'll give it to you jesus what happened satan is a liar okay <laughs> true correct yes yes so uh we know that god created man and he gave him complete authority but what happened genesis chapter 3 what happened satan man disobeyed right man disobeyed god uh, and we call that the fall of man when man sinned man sinned we understand that everything got corrupted everything got corrupted originally god put man in charge god gave man dominion when sin happened there was a shift of authority and satan started interfering he took over in that sense and then you know you started having so many things being done by satan um uh, you know destruction calamity disaster pain a sickness disease many things that satan brought upon people and the earth and that is why in luke chapter 4 satan is saying these kingdoms belong to me okay when we read ephesians 2 and verse 2 it says uh this world is under the sway of the devil meaning he's controlling he is uh sort of you know he has the reins or he is he is uh, running the show in the world out there and that's why he's telling jesus after sin after the fall of man authority got shifted into his hands and he's saying jesus i will give it to you okay but we have to also remember that it was the lord jesus who died for us on the cross to bring back that authority satan is defeated because jesus hung on the cross for us so when jesus made a sacrifice whatever satan did is nullified okay because satan is completely defeated so in our lives as believers you know once again we carry the kind of authority that god originally intended when he created man and woman okay so do we all understand about authority and authority now as believers yeah so now that we believe in jesus we carry authority the way god gave man and woman authority and the deput deputization of the earth to man is complete okay we'll discuss about it uh, a little bit more uh, further later on but the point is when things go wrong okay things go wrong we can't blame god for it 
Okay, let me just give you another example. Let's imagine that uh, one of you has been chosen to own this building. Okay, and we say that, okay, this uh, entire Bible college building belongs to you. We will give you the keys to the main entrance and all the rooms and everything else in this building. Okay, we give you the keys. And we say, we write a contract with you and say, okay, uh, for one year, you are the owner of this building. Now, in that one year, let's, let's uh, uh, also imagine you put some people, uh, you know, you give some people allowance to stay here. Uh, and uh, the water is not coming, okay? The taps are not working, the lights are not uh, coming on, uh, different things are going on. Who should they come to? They should come to me who gave the building to you or to you who has actually kept them there? Who should they come to rightfully? You, whoever has the keys right now, isn't it? Because you have full rights over this building. So. If the maintenance is not good, if things are broken down, if the door is broken, the, the, you know, the uh, key is not working, the person who owns the place is responsible. One can't be calling you know, the person who built the building and say, hey, what have you built? It, nothing is working over here. But you see, somebody is in charge. Somebody is fully in charge of the building right now, and which would be you. You have the keys. And so if something is not working, you would be questioned on why is it not working? It's very similar as far as the world is concerned right now. God put us here on the earth and we are stewards of this world. Many things happen in this world, right? So many things go wrong. We see disasters, we see tsunamis, we see tornadoes. And what do people immediately say? The work of God. God is doing this. God is bringing this upon us. You know, uh, all, all this disease is spreading because of God. God made this happen. God, why are we blaming God? Whereas scripture is saying, God put you and me in charge. It's our responsibility. We are stewards of the earth. Okay. What happens here, we carry authority to either propagate, promote that, or to stop that. Now, if I am not using my responsibility and my authority, God is not responsible. You got it? Now, we'll discuss this also. You see, God is all powerful. Why is God not interfering? Can't God see all the evil that is happening in the world? Can't God see this? Can't God see people are suffering? No, there are all these comments that people make. However, God's deputization is 100%. So when the keys are given to us, the contract is written on our name, every two days, the owner will not come running and say, oh, let's fix the tap. Let's you know, fix the lights. Let's fix the broken chairs. No. The building is in your hands. The building is in my hands. We are responsible. God does not keep interfering. He says, I've given you my name. I've given you authority. I've given you the power through faith. You do it. You rise up. That's why we're learning about prayer. Because prayer is one of the ways through which you and I can exercise authority. God gave us authority. How to use it? Pray. When we pray, we can release this authority that God has vested upon you and me as his children. Okay? So... That is the reason we don't find God interfering every time. No. He says, you are responsible. You are in charge. You take care. I'm depending on you. Even though God is God, sovereign God, he has chosen to let us use our authority. So it's a, it's a very, um, like very mind-boggling revelation. How can God do this? How can God trust us so much? But he does. And he says, you step forward. You pray. You release the authority. If Satan is interfering, you get him out. It's our job. Okay? And we carry the authority. So the heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to the sons of men, which is you and me. 
we are walking here with authority and we need to do our part to enforce the victory of Jesus in every area of our lives as well as the lives of people around us. Okay, so um, let's settle that thought in our hearts. So in fact, there was a man of God, some of you may have heard his name, John Wesley. Uh, he made a statement, okay, his statement, I will read it out to us. It's there in our notes as well. It says, God does nothing on the earth save in answer to believing prayer. Which means things could be happening here. And, uh, you know, we want God to work, but God does not do anything till someone prays. Till someone prays. So, if things are not working, if um, things are going bad, and God is not, we don't see God at work, what could be one of the problems? We are not praying, right? Prayer is that important. Prayer is that important. When we don't pray, we may not even see God working because we are not praying. That's what John Wesley is trying to say. God does not do any, God does nothing on the earth save in answer to believing prayer. So the responsibility falls on us to understand what prayer is all about and to pray. So I'm just going to wrap up right now. Uh, we will go into our short break before we proceed further on this subject. But any questions, any thoughts so far? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Correct, correct. Yes. Why is it? 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, why is it that, um, see, God knows everything, and still, why is it that we must pray, right, to make those things happen? Why do we need to tell him? Uh, it's, I mean, of course, we would think that way, but in the Bible, we'll come to it. We'll come to it. There are places where Jesus said, ask. Till now, you've not asked anything, but ask the Father in my name, and I will do it to you, do it for you. So you see, it's an instruction from God. It's an instruction from God. So we have to obey the instruction. I understand where you're coming from. But the way God has designed prayer is such that he wants us to engage. Does God know everything? He knows everything. Does he know the solution to all the problems? He does. But even then, um, there is something called as co-laboring that God wants us to uh, be a part of. He won't do it fully. He wants us to pray. He wants us to ask and uh, all of that. Right. So in short, I shared. But uh, anyway, we're going to be talking about all these things later. Great. Thank you. All right. Let's go in for our break and be back here in 10 minutes. See you all at 11 o'clock. Thank you.